Today we're out with Jaron Birding, and Jaron is working on a John Deere Max Emerge 5E. You can see it in the background there. And uh, the Burning Farms will be using this drill to put uh, corn and milo in the ground towards the end of April and into the May timeframe. So Jaron, I think the viewers would be really interested in uh, you telling us a little bit more about this Max uh, Emerge 5E. Uh, how many rows is it? You know, acres per hour? any other technical uh, specs you think the viewers might find interesting and and most importantly it looks like the drill is uh, partially torn apart you might kind of walk them through the annual maintenance you guys do before uh, planting seasons uh, season so I'll let you take it away Jaron um, yeah so I can get probably 40 acres done in an hour um, the hell is the other question uh, just you know, uh, acres per hour, and you know how many rows is this? This thing oh. is this thing is huge. That's yeah, twenty four rows. And you know, looking at this hopper, it looks like it'll hold a fair amount of seed. So you know, how often do you have to refill it? Is it once a day? Is it twice a day? During corn, um, it's probably. You have enough for like 500 acres. 500 acres? When they're full. And during, and then when it's full with um, Milo, you have enough for around 2,000. Wow, okay, so quite a bit more with Milo. Yeah. So maybe you could go a couple of days without refilling on Milo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. A lot less stopping. Yep. So what are you up to today? It looks like this thing is in pieces and I'm, I'm assuming that this is an annual, uh, maintenance activities that you have to do before planting season or is this something that isn't as frequent as every year well we replace all the discs every year and walk us through what is a disc can you point out a disc okay here are the new ones okay and the one, I guess they're right there Wow. And why do you have to replace it? Like right there's the old old disc, right? Yeah. And what's the reasoning for replacing these? Just how much wear. Okay, so they actually, if you look at it, and if we center that, you probably lost oh a half a, a half an inch in total at least from and that's just from one planting season? Yeah. And they basically, they, they get all their wear because you guys are pretty much all no-till, so they're having to kind of break open that ground and open it up for that seed. Is that how that works? Right, and for how dry we've been too, we've had to have a lot of downforce on the rows. And, and downforce is just more pressure to, to kind of break open the earth? Yeah. Is that what and, that's called? And to get the seed in the, in the ground in the right depth. Okay. What happens if you don't replace those discs? Does it, I mean, is it... What, is there is there some disadvantage to not replacing them? I mean, it won't go in the ground as far. Okay. And we we had a lot of problems with our deer discs breaking the, the rivets and bearings going out. Okay. So we we switched discs last year, and they work. They're a lot thicker. They work really well. But they came out with a. A disc like what we're using now, and they came out with it this year, and it's a lot thicker. It should be better. But and you're talking about these here in the box, or uh, no? Well, these are what we what we are using now. But the deer came out with something similar to these. Okay. Where the bearings are a lot thicker too. Okay. So these aren't deer discs. Mm -mm. Okay. And where do you order something off like that? I mean, is that just something you can? Do you buy through John Deere, or do you have to you get through somebody else that offers parts for planters? I think BTI has them. Okay, I've heard I've heard of BTI. So walk us through. So you're going to be replacing the disc. Is there is there anything else that you kind of do from a preventative maintenance perspective on these before they start rolling? Well, I replaced all the fertilizer tubes. Okay. Because they're really thin there. Oh yeah, you can tell they. 
that earth kind of wears them down, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and and so is that drop and dry fertilizer or liquid fertilizer? Liquid. Okay. And is that something that uh, you guys are always running liquid fertilizer when you put the seeds in the ground, or does it just depend? It just depends on the field. If we have enough, we don't we don't run it. But and, and is that based on soil tests and things like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now these other parts on the ground, do they just do they just have to come off to get to the disc, or are you doing something with these other components to the drill? Well, I had to take everything off to replace the the fertilizer tubes, and now I'm replacing the the seed tubes. Okay. So they're really brittle, and they they're starting to have starting to issues. crack. Yeah. And Some I see a little worse electronic. Other you know action going on here is this like is this actually counting the seeds or what's going on there yeah it has an eye sensor in here and it you know okay. calculates is it pretty accurate i mean i know you guys you know base so many what, what do they call it population per acre or something right. is that give you a pretty good accuracy yeah i we haven't Okay. I think so. I haven't had any problems okay. with it. They seem to work well. Okay. So is there a... These are original on the planter and I've had it for six years. So oh, no kidding. Okay. I think I've only had to replace one of these because it broke. But one of the... The, the, the seed tubes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what what is all this? There's there's a lot of hose on this. What what is this hose doing? I'm assuming that has something doing with transporting the seeds to the to each row. Yeah. So all this is vacuum, and it creates vacuum. Goes into the hose here. So it has vacuum on on the disc, so the seed can stay in the in the disc and go to the ground. Okay, and so that vacuum is somehow released whenever that seed needs to drop. Well, it has the brushes and knockers, so it has a knocker whenever it's ready to go to the ground, it just drops. Oh, that knocker pushes it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's how you really get the precision <clears throat> in the distance of each plant, basically, is with, with that plate in there, right? Yeah. And are those plates, do you change them based on the, 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 the crop? Like, is it a different plate for corn versus milo? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And is, uh, are the plates, you know, is it just one type of plate for corn, or do you guys get to specify how close the plants are together with those plates and different options for plates? Oh. Or is it kind of a universal, here's the corn plate, here's the milo plate? I mean, there's a bunch of different plates out there that you can use. Okay. But. Are there any examples like, you know, dry land versus irrigated corn where you would space the plants closer or farther away? Well, like during irrigated, I mean, you could have, you know, this planter set up for 30 inch spacing. Um, if you're, you know, if you're chopping silage or doing whatever, you can have it set up to 15. 15? Inch. And is that between rows? Yeah. Now, what is the spacing between plants? Is there, do you guys specify that? Is it six inches or, you know, how, how does that work? Like between seed drops? Between seed drops would be, I don't know, probably... I'm not for sure. I know it just, it kind of just calculates it on its own. Okay. Okay. Well, very I, cool. I, I don't think you can, I don't know, there might be a disc or something that might be able to get it closer. I'm not too for sure on that. And is, is the distance between plants the same for dryland and uh, irrigated? The distance is, but, well, the only thing you can do is up your population. I guess that would be the way of changing the distance. Okay. With, with and and can you do that on the fly in the tractor, or is that yeah. is that a is that something to do with this disc over here, this plate? Uh, it's in the tractor. Okay. You can just up the population, and it'll spit out. And it makes you wonder if it's just spinning that pl uh, that you know plate quicker or something. Yeah. It will. Okay. Okay. With that. So. 
So it's not really a distance thing. It's your your your, your populations population. increase, so the distance decreases. I'm yeah. assuming. Yep. Okay. What else do you want to show us on this uh, Max Emerge 5e? How is it to load? Uh, we were out with uh, Nick when he was drilling wheat, and we did a video of him, you know, kind of loading up the the wheat drill. Um, it had an auger and stuff attached to it. It doesn't look like this thing has that auger. So how do you load it? Oh, well, we have a slide that we stick in a pro box. Uh-huh. And then we'll just load it with the forklift up top. Oh, okay. And it just kind of gravity effect in? Well, yeah, it'll just flow in. Okay. And, and those are the pro boxes, right? For... For the yeah. viewers that maybe are not as familiar with that, you got your bag of seed here to the right. You can see the Pioneer with the orange bottom and then the Pro Boxes. Do you know right offhand how many bags are in the Pro Box? Oh, the, typically 50. Okay, so a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right, well, we're still a, a, a month and a half to two months away from corn planting but it is coming and we will be doing some videos of that and uh, we look forward to seeing this uh, planter in action uh, here in a month and a half or so. Jared wanted to show us one of the planters that he has finished up and is this the same model Jared? Yeah. Okay so this is the same model that we were just viewing and I, I wanted to show off this uh, track tractor real quick the John Deere 410 uh, looks like 8RX and you can see just these massive tracks on this uh, machine But Jaron wanted to kind of show us the finished product. So this is uh, the max emerge 5e And this is Jaron. This is a drill that you literally just got done doing maintenance on Replacing you can see the brand new discs here um, What else would you like to tell us about? Uh, uh, this thing's ready to go too, by the way, right? It's ready to start uh, planting corn, right? Yep. Okay, so what do you want to tell us about uh, kind of the parts you replaced and anything else? Looks like it's greased up and ready to go. Uh, yeah, I replaced the upper, or upper and lower parallel arms. Okay. On up. Replaced these bushings here for the cash wheels. Okay. And we made these custom um, covers so that way you're going through stocks or anything. It, protects all the wires and everything okay and and why did you have to replace these arms was was there something you know do they wear out is that what happens yeah they wall are out okay so bad. get loose yeah okay and so we've actually had a couple break on us okay so you just try to stay ahead of it obviously because yeah. you know you'd, it'd just be a mess having that happen you'd basically it'd shut down the operation right if you lose one of those you have to basically stop right you have to yeah you have to stop and get it Okay. Get a okay. Get yeah. yeah. Okay. What else is there? Uh, is there anything else? Did you uh, replace the seed tubes like you were showing us on the other one? Uh, no. This one's newer. Okay. How old would you say this one is? Um, I'd say this one's at least three. Three. Three years newer. Three to four. Okay. And same thing on this one, you know, roughly 40 acres an hour is what you can average on a good day. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else you can think of? Oh, I don't think so. All right. Well, thanks for showing us uh, this one.